Hello, welcome back. In this movie tutorial, we'll be covering everything to do with compositing. This is also covered in the PDF manual, Studio Magic 2, Chapter 7, Compositing. Speaking of the PDF manual, let's just take a look at some of the important topics here. You want to plan out your composite in advance, and that starts with the right background, building your own library, and working with stock photos. Now, in a lot of your composites, you're going to be cutting someone out and putting them into a new background, and you want to make certain that you have good contrasting values between the subject and the background. Now, you can photograph them in your kitchen or garage, as long as you've got those contrasting values. If they're wearing black, you want to photograph them on a white background. Now, alternatively, that's why I've jumped to this particular section in the PDF. You can get these easy ups, and many of them are under $100, and they're very simple and lightweight to use. And of course they come with different color backgrounds so you can photograph your subjects on these and then it makes it very easy to remove them with the Studio Magic panel. Let's return to Photoshop. So let's get started and see how this image was created from scratch. So as I mentioned earlier you get your basic elements together. I've got the football player here and the stadium. So then you decide what size print you're going to be using. I'm going to make an 11 by 14 so Control or Command N will bring up the new document dialog box. You can put in any size here that you want of course. Click OK. So let's bring up our original two documents here. We've got this one. If you hold down the shift key when you're dragging and dropping that will center it for us in the new image. So just drag and drop holding the shift key down and there it is. So let's drag and drop in our football player. Reposition him. So let's begin by putting some light behind the player. I'm going to select the background layer. Then I'm going to go to Studio Magic 2, go to the drop down and select Lighting Effects. And now I'm going to go to the Raise Beams and Bursts, click on Choose Preset. Scroll down here through these and pick the background haze. OK. Create. I'm going to reposition it a bit behind him. Now remember when they come in in the groups and you've got your move tool you want to make sure that the auto select is selected and group is selected not layer. So when I go here and click on it I can move it and just centralize it a little bit more. I'm going to also drop the intensity down a little bit. Update. Next I'm going to apply grunge boost to him. Make sure that he is selected in the layers. Go to the drop down once again in Studio Magic 2 and I'm going to select Hyper Zap. Now you want to make sure that you select Selected Subject. Create. I'm going to increase the intensity a little bit. Update. Now when you're happy with that you click on Merge Layers. Now you have the Grunge Boost merged into one single layer which you can control if you want to drop the opacity back a little bit. If you want it a little less stronger I'm going to leave it at 100%. Now I'm going to add an edge light to him. So let's go back to the drop down here, back to lighting effects and edge light. Create. I'm going to reduce the intensity. Update. So you have a layer mask here attached to the edge light. I've got my brush, it's set at 42 opacity, so I can paint away some of this edge light from wherever I want to remove it or minimize it a bit. So you've got total creative control. Now I'm going to add some stars to the sky. So let's go once again to the drop down here to Compositor and go to Starry Night. I'm going to choose a preset. Scroll up to the top here. Minimal star field. OK. Create. When you add the stars you're going to find that you're going to have to remove them from certain parts of the image. So it's very simple. Painting on the layer mask got at 100% and I'm just going to make sure that I remove any stars that are on him and any of the background area. Clean up over here a little bit. And now if I want to increase the stars all I have to do is just duplicate this star layer because we've already set it up, we've already done the editing on the layer mask. Control or Command J. Now with the duplicated layer I'm going to move it over a little bit so that the stars aren't exactly on top of each other here. What you want to do is, I've got my move tool selected, I'm going to turn off auto select okay, and make sure that you have that layer selected and now I can click in and drag and you can put them wherever you want, you just don't want them exactly over the top of the other ones. So I'm going to move them up a little bit, 
that way I'm not going to be going over any of the stadium here or him. Now I'm going to add a moon, so let's go to the moon clock, click on preset, I'm going to select the full moon, OK, create, reposition it. Now I'm going to add some extra light on the stadium lights, so back to our drop down here, lighting effects. So I'm going to choose a preset and let's take a look here. Sunburst, OK, create, reposition it, drop the intensity back. I'm going to resize it, it's a bit too big. Now for the other stadium light on the other side here, instead of doing all that again, you just duplicate this layer, Control or Command J. So I'm going to click and drag this across to the other stadium light. Now if you wanted to, you could apply free transform tool to it, Control or Command T. When you're doing that, of course, you're going outside of the panel, so just bear that in mind. But if you wanted to, you could right click in here and that brings up all of the modifiers for the free transform tool. So you might want to experiment with maybe flipping it horizontal, but it doesn't seem to make a lot of difference in this case. And then you just reposition it, get it exactly the way that you want it. I'm going to apply a tint to this image and we'll find that under the drop down here under HyperZap. Color pop. Click on this drop down. Let's take a look here. I'm going to try the blue do a pop, create. I'm going to drop the intensity back a bit, update. So we have a layer mask here that we can paint away any of the tint from any part of the image, painting with black. I'm at 70%, I'm going to drop it back to about 60. Now I can remove some of that tint, have some of the color of his face showing through here. Let's bring up a different image. So I added the boat that was cut out using Studio Magic 1. And now what I'm going to do is add a reflection. So we go to the drop down, reflections, make sure selected subject is selected, create. There is virtually no wind here, so I'm going to drop the ripples back to about 1%. Update. I'm going to move the reflection up. Now I'm going to add some ground mist and fog. That's found under Enviro fogged in. So I'm going to select the boat so that we bring the fog and ground mist in above the boat and go to the drop down here, ground mist, create. So you can see a special fog layer has been added here and I've got this special custom brush that you can increase or decrease the size by using the brackets key. Now if you click in here and then you release the mouse and click again you see the actual brush changes, that's the jitter on the brush you can turns around and you get all kinds of different angles of the ground mist coming into your image. Now I could increase the intensity but I'm going to leave it there for the time being because we're going to be bringing in fog now. So create. So we have a different layer here to work on and a different brush so I'm going to start bringing that in and as you can see as I click off of the mouse it changes direction slightly so we can get that variation of the mist bring it across here. Let's bump the intensity up. Update. Let's create another fog layer here and I'm going to start bringing that in over here. Let's increase the intensity. Update. Now we're getting it the way that we want it. Let's add some light rays in here. So we go to the drop down lighting effects rays. So I think we'll go with bright long spread. Select that one, click OK, create. I'm going to apply the free transform control or command T to reposition it and get the angle right. So we put it up here. And now I'm going to resize it. Update. Drop the intensity back some. Let's add some clouds up to this blue sky. So we go to Compositor and we'll click on, let's take a look here, Cirrus High Overhead, OK, Create. Drag that up into the sky. I'm going to add some birds here. So let's go into the presets, scroll down, let's take a look here, 
want some on the bottom and some up in the sky there. So these will be in the bottom. OK, create. I'm going to resize them, make them a bit smaller. And I'm going to drag them below the fog here, just above the boat. Drag them over here. I'm going to reduce their size a bit more. And now we can add a reflection to them. So let's go to Reflections, Selected Subject, Create. I'm going to reduce the intensity and blur it a little bit. Now I'm going to add some more birds up in the sky. So let's take a look here. OK. Create. Resize. Let's move them up into the sky. Drop the intensity back and put some motion blur on them. And we're finished with this image. And as I mentioned, all of this and more is all covered in your PDF manual. You can create images from scratch as we've just done with the two images that we just created, or you can embellish existing images. And this is also covered in other movie tutorials that are included with the package. This concludes the final tutorial for Studio Magic 2. Thank you for watching and have a great day.